Hi, Apartment Therapy. This house is filled with DIYs, and that's often the first thing I see when I enter a space. So I'm gonna give you a tour, and I'm gonna show you all of the DIYs. My biggest goal with this house, with, with any house really, is to bring our personality into the space. And for me, that means a lot of color, a lot of pattern, a little bit of fun. I have five kids, so it can't be too precious, it can't be too cute. And that's sort of where I started. This is our foyer. I wanted to go big and bold and dramatic with the styling. Obviously the wallpaper is so much. It's just what I wanted. But this little foyer table is a DIY that brings me so much joy. This started with a dinky little Ikea Rast dresser. And then I went ahead and I used a brad nailer to attach that flexible molding. That's what gives it that really contemporary sort of vibe on the front. I added some acrylic legs. I painted it blue at first because I didn't know what was going on in the space. And then I came back and I painted it that chartreuse to go with the wallpaper and it is just mm, chef's kiss. I love the look of a big, bold, colorful ceiling. So for this house, I knew I wanted to bring in color. I wanted to bring it into the ceiling. And that was the very first thing I did when we moved in. This dresser was at the ReStore for, I don't know, something like $40 and it was painted. And I knew that I wanted to try and strip a piece of furniture. I did not know that when I stripped the paint from this piece, I would discover the most beautiful, symmetrical, exquisite wood grain. Sidebar, I don't know who would paint anything that looks like this, but here we are. It is one of my favorite pieces. It was such a happy accident. And so it had to be front and center in our living room. It's great storage. It's just a perfect anchor for all of the color that's around it in this space. The coffee table was a challenge that I had. I was actually working with frog tape, which is where the inspiration for the stripes come in. But it was the first time that I created a piece of furniture like that with mitered corners. I really wanted a clean shape to help balance the aggressive stripes. And I really kind of like the contrast and I just think it's a fun piece for this space. Ah, my sheep. My sheep is one of those DIYs that was just a vision, it was an itch I had to scratch. Don't ask me why or how or what the purpose was, but I had the most fun just trying to figure it out. And that has actually been something that I've leaned into a little bit because I do think as makers and as adults, we lose sense of the joy and the process that goes into making. And so every once in a while, I try to do something silly. I try to do something just for the heck of it. And this sheep was one of them. And I kind of love it. My kids ride on it. It's just the perfect little DIY for the corner of our living room. We call her Barbara. This is our downstairs powder room and I gave it a mini makeover right when we moved in that actually was fine, it was great. But I was hankering to do the full shebang. I wanted to pull up the floor. wanted to bring in a different vanity and that's what I did. So this vanity was actually from Facebook Marketplace as was the sink on top. That's one of my favorite ways to bring in a little character and a little charm. It's a pretty easy DIY, relatively speaking. And then obviously a new tile floor, new wallpaper. I just think it brings the space together. I joke that I'm gonna have a cocktail party and just serve only liquid and, <laughs> and they're gonna go visit. Powder.
These bunk beds are the biggest DIY that I have tackled to date, both literally and emotionally. <laughs> I had a friend help with the early stages of it just to make sure that I was doing it the right way because two tiny humans have to sleep on this and I just wanted to make sure that it was structurally sound. I wanted something that was clean lines. The girls wanted curtains. I wanted a little nook behind their heads. Once we figured out that, it was just like any piece of furniture. I mapped it out and measured and remeasured and made the wrong cuts and went and made more cuts and bought more plywood and we did it. The color is pulled from the wallpaper that I knew I was using in there. And it's one of my kids' favorite spaces. They still want to have their own rooms, but since they don't, they love it. This is my oldest daughter's room and she is 13, which means she has opinions, but she is very sweet and she does let me come in and do some design every once in a while. So for this space, we actually brought in some wallpaper and we used that as the headboard. This is a great way to use wallpaper in an unconventional way. It's budget friendly and it is a great solution for a small space or really any bedroom. This is the primary bedroom, and when we first looked at this space, there was no furniture. The New Yorker in me, it, it's cavernous. It's so big. And so my goal with this space was to make it feel a little bit cozier. So the first thing was paint. This is a big, bold choice. It's only paint, but I loved it. I love bringing in that saturated green, and all of a sudden, it made the walls just come in ever so slightly. And then this one big wall facing the bed. I knew I needed something. Built-ins would have been perfect. Built-ins are not cheap. I am cheap. And so what I did is I went to the restore and I found a pair of hutches. I didn't love the hutches, but I was able to do a little bit of work. I pulled off the glass cabinet doors. I retrofitted the drawer front so they looked a little bit more clean. I added a desk to connect them and then I styled them and now all of a sudden because they're painted the same color as the walls they feel a little bit more like a built-in. You may have opinions about the green, that's fine, but I still think they solve the problem of bringing in a built-in without breaking the budget. And then the primary bathroom was another space that needed a little bit of love but we did not, again, have the budget to gut it. It is a perfectly shaped room. I just didn't love some of the design choices. I don't love the tile that are in here. So my goal was to de-emphasize the tiles. So I painted it with a neutral color. I added a subtle pink stripe that would play off of the rug. And then again, I brought in another thrifted piece of vanity that I retrofitted into a sink. I bleached the wood so that it was a little bit more subtle. I added really fun, bold sconces on either side of it. I swapped out the hardware, and that makes all the difference in the world. Probably for a few hundred dollars, it feels like a totally different room, and we love it. The kitchen was honestly one of the more problematic aspects of this house when we moved in. It originally had this dated tile floor. So the first thing we did is we got rid of that and we put down hardwood, which helped a lot. But it also had this aggressive ivory color on the cabinets. I'm sure that was popular at some point, but not today and not with me. But we didn't have a budget to do any heavy lifting. We couldn't move around cabinets. You know the deal, we couldn't do any of that. So I spent hundreds of dollars on paint samples. Um, the number was more than 20 to find the perfect green for the cabinets. Don't ask me how I settled on green. It's a color that I personally love because I think it can be fun and playful, but also not too cute. I brought in a backsplash that I was able to do myself to save a little money. New counters, the side counters are actually a high pressure laminate, so that's a real budget option, but it looks to me like a slate, which I love. So it was not budget budget friendly, but when it comes to kitchens, it was pretty budget friendly. I was asked to build a playhouse, and that is an intimidating job, but I was excited to try something new, so I decided to do an A-frame with a clear roof. Turns out building an A-frame is actually not that complicated, so that was happy news. 
And I got my kids involved to figure out what they wanted in the playhouse that would make it fun for them. So you can see we brought out a carpet, there's a little desk. We have snacks out here in jars so the animals can't get to them. They're usually empty because the kids will just go and finish them. But arts and crafts, and they will often come out here with friends on a play date and I can see them through the dining room window and there is nothing sweeter. This is my office. And hopefully they can drop in a before shot right about now because this was bad. This was all concrete. It was clearly just a storage zone, but I knew immediately that this was gonna be my office. It's out of the way. The kids really have to work to find me so I can hide for at least a few minutes. Obviously the first thing we had to do was frame and drywall. I paid to have that done because I am not crazy. I added trim around the windows and then what I did DIY in here is I painted the floor that bright colorful blue. It is the original concrete. I didn't bring in any flooring because ain't nobody got time for that. And then they're builder basic base cabinets that I painted and then I built the shelves that are on top of them. I used budget friendly butcher block for the counter itself. And then again, paint is the superhero in this space. I added a bold color block to one side of the shelves because if you can't have fun in your own office, where can you have fun? And then the rest is just furniture that I had around. There is so much stuff in this office and I really wanted it to feel like a room that I could come to and enjoy, but I also need it to be a workhorse. This is the space in my house that feels like me. There are colorful accessories, all the things that I collect at flea markets, you name it, it's gonna be in this space, and I love coming down here to work. Living in a home with five children means that I have to make certain choices for design that other people might not have to make. And I always want a space that reflects my family, but doesn't necessarily have my family overflowing into every realm. And that means that we have a lot of bins, a lot of baskets. Thankfully, we do have closet space, but we do try to keep things purged and organized. So I want it to feel like this happy medium between, oh yeah, there's kids that live in this house and it, is neat and I don't feel like I'm stepping over socks and shoes and pants and underwear and everything. A lot of my motivation for design, quite honestly, is budget. And I'm always conscious of budget. So I have found that doing it myself is a real easy way to keep the budget in check. And my general process whenever I'm doing something on my own is just to take it slow. I go one step at a time. There are often mistakes. Every project I do is a learning journey. Every room in my house has taught me something. And sometimes you just have to try it. We are not dealing with brain surgery. We are not flying an airplane. We are making things. There is not really a downside to trying something and failing, especially if you're dealing with inexpensive materials or a $50 piece of furniture that you grabbed from a thrift store. These are ways that I set myself up for success because even if the thing I'm making doesn't turn out so well, I've learned something and the next time I can go and I can try it again and I'll hit a home run and eventually I have a space that I can walk through and be really, really proud of. The connection between home and how we feel is profound. I love to think in Venn diagrams, but there's this intersection between the home that you live in and sort of the innermost parts of your being. And that feeling is what I try to bring into a space. And it's a lot of this is me. It's a lot of this is how I parent. A lot of this is how I want my children to be in the world. A lot of this is how, you know, I just want to be as a human on this planet. I know this is a little bit sort of out there, but truly when I walk into this house, I just feel seen.